and welcome to the episode 299 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. On this episode, among other things, we have regional finals, a couple of studio sessions, and the Beatles getting their MBEs. Let's see. On the 26th of October 1959, Johnny and the Moondogs, a trio featuring George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, took part to the regional finals of TV Star Search, a new ATV program to find new TV entertainment acts. As you will recall, the trio had successfully passed the preliminary stage on the 18th of the month. Check episode 291 for that. The finals went on from the 26th to the 31st of October, and Johnny and the Moondogs must have performed at least twice, but the exact dates of the performances are not known. The band passed the audition and went on to the final round, ending second in the bunch behind the Connaughts, a band who had beaten the Quarrymen, the trio's former band, for another spot in an ATV show, back in June 1957. See episode 160 for more information. In 1960, the Beatles, in their quintet lineup with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best but with Paul McCartney now on bass, performed a lunchtime gig at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Same place, same time in 1962. In fact, the Beatles played twice today, first on their lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club, and then, in the evening, at the Public Hall in Preston. For this second occasion, the band, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, shared the bill with Mike Berry and the Outlaws and the Sid Munson Orchestra. On the 26th of October 1963, the Swedish tour of the Beatles continued with two shows at the Kalinga Tennis Hallen in Stockholm, the first at 5 pm and the second at 8 pm. Theoretically, the Beatles were second fiddle to a band called Joey D and the Starlighters, but the screaming audiences indicated otherwise. After the second gig, John and Ringo attended a party held by Joey D at his hotel. Before tackling the studio part of the episode, allow me to remind you to visit www.simonmas.com support. The link is in the description, as usual. Do I need to tell you that your support is indeed fundamental to keep this party going? If you want more and better music-related content, you know what to do. Thank you! On the 26th of October 1964, the Beatles used another of their quote-unquote rest days from their British tour to return to the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, London. Between 10 am and 12.45 pm, they attended a mono mix session for I Don't Want to Spoil the Party, Rock and Roll Music, Words of Love, Babies in Black, I'm a Loser and Kansas City Hey 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 Hey. Then, between 12.45 and 1.05 pm, they attended the stereo mixdown of Kansas City Hey 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 Hey. The real work for them started at 4.30 pm, when they recorded five takes of Honey Don't, with Ringo Starr taking the place of John Lennon on vocals. Ringo needed a singing spot on the album and the four decided this was going to be it. The song was completed by 6.30 pm. After a break, between 7.30 and 10 pm, the Beatles taped the remake of What You're Doing, with a total of seven takes. Before the end of this last session, the lads also managed to properly record the material for their Christmas present to the members of their official fan club, another Beatles Christmas record. Another mixing session in 1965, still at EMI Studios. In the morning, between 10 am and 12.30 pm, producer George Martin prepared stereo mixes of Drive My Car, The Tripper, 
in my life if I needed someone, Norwegian wood, this bird has flown, and nowhere man. Martin worked alone this time, because the Beatles were busy in Buckingham Palace. It was on this day that the Fab Four received their MBEs, along with another 189 people, during a ceremony taking place at 11 am in the Great Throne Room. After being instructed about how to behave in front of the Queen, each Beatle was called forward and received his medal from the monarch, who shook their hands and chatted a bit before dismissing them. In the anthology book, Paul calls the Queen sweet. After the ceremony, given the enormous interest from the media, the Beatles gave a press conference about the whole deal, held at the Saville Theatre. It was the usual affair with the press inviting the fabs to ponder on fundamental questions like why George decided to wear a blue suit and whether they had used alarm clocks to wake up on time for the ceremony. But fear not, I have an equally fundamental piece of information for you before closing the episode. All things said and done, on this date in 1967, the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film still went on tirelessly at Norman's Film Productions in London. You gotta love the dedication. Having said that, let's adjourn to tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.